Shalom, Shalom, Hebra. It's an honor and delight to be here with Rabbi David Sears, who's a lifelong visual artist who worked at different times as an art history instructor, muralist, children's book illustrator, and abstract painter. He also serves as the director of the New York Breast Love Center. Rabbi David, thank you for making time to talk. Thank you for inviting me. So as someone steeped within spirituality and steeped within in art, what's the relationship of those two for you? What is the relationship between your inner world and your outer world? The, the, the world of inner visualization and outer visualization, the relationship between your own, um, your own uh, kind of introspection and your own manifestation. You know, there, there, are, there are many different um, modes of, of, uh, of inquiry and expression that are, that are spiritual. Spiritual is a very broad word. And when, when, when you're learning Gemara, it's spiritual. When you're, when you're davening, it's spiritual. Um, when, you're, when, you're, when you're interacting with another person and you're talking heart to heart, that's spiritual, you know? But uh, there's something unique about, about art, which is that it's, it's, a, it's visual. I'm speaking of my own art, of course, primarily, but, but all forms of art, that in, 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 in that you're, you're, you're really, um, uh, 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 getting in touch with your your own inner being directly, and uh, directly is is it also needs qualification. I mean, uh, you're you're using different 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 means, and those means will condition what happens. Um, if you're using uh, whatever 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 form of painting you may be doing, whatever materials you may be using, whatever your background may be aesthetically. Uh, and that applies to other art forms, I'm, I'm sure as well. But it's a, a more direct thing. For example, I have I have um, uh, a a chavrusa uh, who's who's a very a very brilliant Talmud Chacham, and uh, he's writing a parish on the Mishnah. He's writing a commentary on the whole Mishnah. It's a revolutionary thing. It's astounding. He's a, an extremely brilliant, extremely creative person. But it's an intellectual creativity. So when we when we learn together, um, it's it's uh it's it's a different type of thing but his personality type it's 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 everything you know he, he feels no other of other need but uh but for me as much as i love i love that type of learning and i love to learn with him personally um i still feel that there i have i have to access other other dimensions of the soul and uh and and explore them and express them at the same time so, uh, so it's a different thing. Yeah. Um, Ahmed speaks about his point of this, about, about uh, secluded personal prayer and meditation, talking to Hashem in your own words, uh, even, and even contemplating without speech is, is a part of it. To me, I always, I always wonder if I'm neglecting his point of this by painting. But I think that, that, again, for me personally, the way I paint, what I'm trying to do as an artist is really a form of his point of this. I'm trying to connect to, to something within myself and express that and explore the mystery of, of life, of creation, and of, uh, and, and of God's wondrous um, simultaneous, simultaneous presence and absence in the realm of our experience. So, um, so uh, I would make that argument. Yeah. yeah if that challenges me on it. So, um, um... What does, what do you find, he's voted this, what do you find uh, this can open up for you and for others? You know, there are different things that people do during his this. His this, for those who have, have unfamiliar with the term, is, is a, a, a type of, of prayer and meditation simultaneously that Rabbi Nachman advocated. And he, ex, he explains it in, in a number of lessons, Primarily in 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 lesson fifty two in the first half of Luke to Moran and lesson twenty five in the second half. Interesting two five and five two, um, and there are a few other shorter lessons. And um, and the real goal of his uh as stated in fifth in lesson fifty two, is to is to um, to uh, to refine and work through all of your 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 negativity. In whatever forms it, it may take to do tshuva, certainly, but to try to uproot the um, the seeds of all that negativity until one comes to to the very root of it all, and the very root of it all is ego, which is called yeshus in in Hebrew, 
the Rebbe says Eze Dover, that there's, some, there's an Eze Dover, there's so, still something left that you haven't, you haven't purged from, from, your, from your heart. Um, but Reb Nassim then, then in parentheses explains that that, that that means the subtlest trace of, of ego. That's what gives rise to all of these negative feelings, me against you, and my, my, my negative passions, and my negative traits, and so forth and so on. And that's who can be, can be, uh, can be um, nullified, can be made to evaporate through his spite of this. But then, um, when that happens, he says, then the person experiences a total existential transformation. He sees through the illusion of, of the self that he's been laboring under all of his life until this point, and, uh, and, and suddenly realizes that, that all existence is really divine, that his own existence is part of the, the greater, vast, and unimaginable whole of exist, totality of existence, and it's all divine. So he, so he transforms what's called the, the, uh, the, 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 um, the Shori Hametzias, the, 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 the contingent existence, to, to the Mechui of Hametzias, to the, to, to the, um, absolute reality to the 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 uh, the very essence of reality the true existence and uh, those terms are barred from the Rambam by the way which is another interesting discussion but but take us too far afield so, so that that's really the all the overall goal of of despite of this but so a lot of people will go and they'll they'll speak to Hashem and they'll speak and they'll speak in their own language as you're supposed to do and uh, and try to express what uh, what's in their hearts, and they'll they'll supplicate Hashem for the the attainment of those high spiritual goals, and uh, and and systematically try to to work through whatever they have to work through, um, using whatever's been happening in their lives as the the substance of of that spiritual work. <clears throat> the ideal place is to 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 do it in in all alone at night. Uh, where nobody will will interrupt you or disturb you. I we just moved up here to to the Catskills, so I have a ideal Hispoditus place now. I can go out there into the into the woods or or on the the porch of my little studio up in the woods and and make Hispoditus. Um But then there are other other things. I used to have a group of of guys that would come with me to to do Hispoditus in Marine Park, and um, this was this was a number of years ago now. And we used to go out there, and and we weren't we were quiet guys, and uh, we we'd go out to the area we would go to and split up, and uh, synchronize watches, you know, and and uh, and after maybe 45, 50 minutes, we would we would come back and <clears throat> and reconnoiter. <clears throat> so once a friend of mine from Israel, he's really more than a friend; he's a teacher also, a very very uh, amazing breast and a very intellectual person also, which is part of the, the, the interesting thing here, came to America, and I invited him to join us for the Hispoditis, our weekly Hispoditis trip to Marine Park, and he says, can I, can I scream? And I said, well, we're not really screamers, but I think you can. He said, no, one, no one's gonna come arrest me? And I said, it's never happened yet. So he said, all right, so I'll come. So we all went out there again, and we synchronized watches, and we went in different places, and my, my intellectual friend stood there in, 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 the, in the tall grass at a distance from everybody, and he screamed the whole hour from the bottom of his soul. That was his boy did this. So, and, and this is also something that, which, which Brasov Hasidim, some Brasov Hasidim do. But this was, this was his way of doing it. And that also supports my contention that maybe my eye can be a, a way of doing it. Mm was his way of being in touch with his soul and screaming out to Hashem from, 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 from his depths. I want to take, take another minute. I had another friend I'm remembering from long ago in the early days of Uman, right? I first went to Uman in, in, in 1988 and Rosh Hashanah in Uman in 1989. And one of my friends was uh, an American guy who had, who had reinvented himself as a, a Maya Shoram Chosset with a, a golden kaftan and the works, right? He was a very American guy. And, um, and he, he used to come to those early, he's since passed on, he used to come to those, those Rosh Hashanahs and Uman in the early years. And he would, he would stand, typically, he would go there in the morning, he would daven, and he would stand, there was a little house there by where, where, where the Rebbe's grave is. It was right next to that little house. It was an old Russian lady who used to 
live there. And he would stand by that wall and he would start to make us bother this. And he would go into another state of consciousness and then he would start to scream. He would start to scream, oi, oi, from the bottom of his soul. And he would stand there screaming for hours. And he was a very normal guy, but it, was, it always struck me as being a little weird, you know, but he meant he was utterly sincere and, and this was, he was totally unselfconscious and this is what he did for hours. So after a few years, he happened to be in, in America just before Rosh Hashanah. And I said to him, I said, uh, are you, you're, getting, you're getting ready to, to scream oi at the tzian. And he looked at me like aghast. And he said, who screams oi at the tzian? Who does, like he, was, he wasn't even aware that he did it. He went to such a deep place within himself wow. that he did that. I also saw people who, who went to the tzian to do tshuva and sat down on a chair a few, a few feet away from this, this matzeba, this stone thing they built there, and put their hands between their heads and cry for hours. So it, my, my introduction to Brussels was a whole different thing. People shed their own persona, they shed their own pretensions, and Hispotidus became a very profound way to connect. Whatever way that Hispotidus works, whether it's through, through, through something which more, is more verbal, which is what the Rebbe really stresses, or something which is not verbal. And um, so that's, that's really an essential thing. So, you know, you've been talking about Ben Adam Lamako mostly, our relationship to Kurdish Baruch Hu. Um, and then, uh, then uh, what's the relationship of that to Ben Adam Lachavero? You wrote a book about compassion to humans and Ben Adam Lebahema, if you will, um, the relationship between humans and animals. You wrote a book on that. You've been a vegetarian for decades. What's the yeah. relationship between these three spheres? It's a little bit of an artificial construction, but relationship of self to God, God, self to human, and self to other other life creatures. Obviously, they're, 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 if if God is one, then everything that that comes forth from God is one, and every and it's, since God animates everything every second, that everything is animated by the divine, and therefore to to serve God is is willy-nilly to 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 be compassionate to other human beings and to other living creatures and even to the inanimate realm there are four realms that are described in the medieval literature and in the kabbalah too beginning with the dome name the the realm of the silent which means roughly the inanimate or the but it's not really inanimate it's really the, the word silent is the best word for it rocks and stones and so forth whatever whatever inner being they have and then the uh, the vegetative and and the animal level and the human level, which is called medaber, the speaking being, and um, and and they're all they're all different different modes of existence, different dimensions, but they're all interrelated. They're all one. So um, so we have to we as we become more and more aware of this and more sensitive to it, then we we behave in in ways and we feel in ways that are that are. Um, that are appropriate to, to, to the divinity of all of life and of animal life, the suffering of all creatures, the travail of all creatures and of all beings. And um, so, so I, I would say that, that it's, it, it really, it's all one. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. So just, um, ju just you know, a last reflection you want to share with us um, of something, something pressing your feeling in this moment. It's a very complex time in America and in the world. Um, and I wonder how you're relating to this moment uh, uniquely at this time. And, and if you think there's any unique- well, you're, 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 a, uh, you're a young lion. You're, you're a, a, dedic a dedicated uh, advocate of social justice. You roll up your sleeves, you get involved in all these political things. I've always been an introvert and I've always, I've always um, tended to, to, to shy off even although I'm a child of the 60s, and I was exposed to all those people when, when stuff was going absolutely wild in our culture. And I met some of those people back then too. But somehow I was, I was an artist and a poet, and, uh, and I, I, just, I just backed off. And I still find it very challenging to, to do anything more than to, than to make some sort of, some sort of statements of, of what I believe is, is, is right and appropriate and good right now. But um, but I'm 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 not much of an activist, I must say. Okay, so let me so let me ask you this. This is the last question. Then you started posting your art, which is amazing, and and I'm grateful for it. 
And I wonder what some of your your hope um, or 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 kavana you might expect from others in encountering this. I mean, it's a world of Facebook of just common politics and yelling and discourse, and then all of a sudden, oh, Reb Dovid's got art, and then it's in the middle in the middle of this of the midbar. And I wonder, like, what it, what what is something you think we should bring to that when we when we see that? Like, how should we encounter? I, it? I'm I'm not a polemical artist, and I'm not a narrative artist. I'm I'm really um uh really really searching for um for for the 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 wonder and the mystery and the magic of 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 life itself and i'm trying to and i have been trying to develop some sort of an aesthetic language to communicate that and i think that that if we if we can can become undistracted and really get in touch with that inner core of being by whatever means if art works that's great. That's what I'm. That's what I'm into. But whatever works for a person, then I think that our our whole view of life will be transformed, and I think that our that our behavior will fall in line as as, as well. And um, so I, I I never really felt that that the, that the ultimate solution to our human problems is at the political level. Oh, it's very important. The laws that we live by and the way we tr treat people and the, the governments that we create. These are all extremely important things. Right. But it's not the answer. Right. The answer is an existential answer, right. and and um, and we have to pursue that. And if and if and if we can if we can somehow uncover that within ourselves, if we can get in touch with that in our own inner being, then uh, then then I think everything else will will start to. I love to that. I love that. You know, I, I I and I really appreciate that point because while while there are things I I, I feel strongly about advocating for politically. I do think a political revolution without a spiritual revolution can be very dangerous. Absolutely. That we don't have an elevated spiritual consciousness, in our case, of the oneness of a Kaddish Baruch Hu and the interconnectivity of all life and the responsibilities that come with such a consciousness. But for all humanity, just to see how interconnected we are and the need to be gentle and put compassion into that universe. Absolutely. Just political warfare can be very dangerous. And so I think this is a, a very important point. Okay, Shkoyach, and just wishing you continued bracha and hatzlacha for good health and uh, Amen. success. Amen. So keep up your good work, and, uh, and, and thank you for inviting me.